got uh, some eager educators here, and we have a, an amazing expert here as well. So I, I just need to get myself out of the way here. Uh, Christine, thank you so much for, for taking time to join us. Well, I think what we would do with the time that we have is I'm going to let you just introduce yourself, what you do, your, all that good stuff, and then really like, like we talked about before, Ooh. they've got questions, and uh, just let this be really interactive and, and immersive back and forth. So. Um, I'm just gonna hand the baton off to you, let you introduce yourself and then um, let these guys uh, learn as much as they can from you. Hi, hi everyone. <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm actually calling in from Seattle. Um, so I, I, it's a, little, a bit early for me, but uh, <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Um, I am the uh, Senior Content Marketing Manager at Screencast-O-Matic. I actually um, go to events when we, there were events um, and meet with educators um, all over the country. Um, and so I sort of know a little bit about what you guys are going through. And uh, I, I, I work with you guys almost every day. Um, uh, I also uh, handle all of the videos. So any everything that you're seeing on our website, which are like the tutorials or a lot of the blog content, um, I actually edited most of those. And so I am a huge expert when it comes to working with the tool. Um, so you can, you know, obviously ask me a lot of questions about that. Um, and we are launching uh, a bunch of new things as well, which is really exciting. So I can talk to you about that as well. What do you guys got for questions? You guys did some learning. I know you've been using it. So um, fire away why we've got it here uh, this morning. And I just want to ask, um, is this just uh, mostly uh, you guys using the free screen recorder or uh, was there much more to that that you wanted to know about? We're mostly using the free screen one, but if there's a little more to the other one, like an intro version, I, I did purchase the monthly um, one just to be able to edit some of them. Yep. Okay, great. Well, great. and I think that's probably something, I don't know how everybody else feels, but if the district isn't going to buy that, if it's $1.65 a month, that's probably something that I would just buy also. Yes. Um, okay, well, I, you know, I will I will say it's less than $20 a year, um, and you co it comes with the whole video editing suite, which I can kind of just go over, over it really quickly, um, and you get the unlimited uh, recording time. So I know a lot of uh, teachers like to record more than 15 minutes. I don't like to recommend making more than 15 minute videos, but uh, you know, uh, at least for professors, they like to do that. And so um, you get that, that um, unlimited recording time as well. Um, any questions about the free screen recorder or what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish that I can answer for you guys? Um, I have a question. So if you go over the free amount, does it just automatically shut down? Because I've done um, recordings where I go a little bit over the free time and then I go to save it and it's nowhere to be found. Am I looking in the wrong place or like there's not, I didn't get a pop up saying you can purchase the, you know, the extra time or whatever, the new plan. Um, it just disappeared. So I had 20 minutes. That's, that's, Bill, that's actually really good information because I didn't know that and that shouldn't be happening. Um, you should be able to, so a lot of the recordings that you have you have right now, when you launch the free screen recorder, even off of our website, um, uh, it, it, it kind of routes to um, saving to a folder on your computer. So okay. if you actually have, um, you know, if it's slow for you, um to launch or to save just remember that video files take up a lot of room on your computer so i always advise like this i oh sorry um i always have something like a hard drive to make sure that everything's saved on here locally um but yeah um that should not be happening jill so i'm gonna let my uh, tech team know that that's what you're experiencing is that what you're experiencing every single time well, I started watching closer, so I didn't get to go over the time. Okay. Um, and then I guess I need to put a timer up if that's the case, because you get in the middle of talking. Yeah, there's a timer on the recorder itself, and it should tell you that it's getting near or ending. So I'm surprised that you're not getting that small little notification down there. Okay. 
Yeah, but I'll, I'll ask my um, team. Okay, thank you. Um, this is maybe one, I'm just maybe verifying functionality, but it heads up to everyone else. Hopefully you're not in this position, but I was really low on hard drive space on the computer I was recording on. Um, and that 15 minute timer that we typically see was reduced to like three or four minutes. So it looks like it was able to assess how long my video could be while still like being able to use hard drive space with me with on or sorry on my computer. So I'm guessing that's normal functionality, but if anyone runs into that, it's not going to tell you can you can record 15 minutes and then have your hard drive fill up and not actually let you do it from what I can see. Which is very helpful and I appreciate that. It helped me like figure out what the issue was. So another thing too is if you're if you guys are running into a storage issue and you don't have an external hard drive, um, it's it's not ideal, but it's because you guys are in, in in the education Google Drive account, you have unlimited storage as an educator. So you could create a folder, offload your video files if you if you don't want to delete them, you need to hold on to them. You could offload them to your drive into your drive folder, then delete them off your hard drive. And if at any point in time you need to access those, you could always re-download and repurpose. So if you're getting to that point and you don't have that because you have the education, you can store as much as you want on your Google Drive. It just create that folder, create a system for you, offload it there, get it off your hard drive. It's not lost, um, but at least it's also not on your hard drive consuming all your storage as well. If I'm assuming a lot of you guys are using the Chromebook to do these recordings. So would that just automatically, that just goes into your Google Drive then, correct, Aaron? So would that not be the problem with using that? Okay. Yes, it would. Yeah, sorry. I forgot you guys were on the Chromebook. So yes. Yeah. So, uh, I just, I don't know if you guys saw, but we just launched a new Chromebook video editor app. Um, it's separate from going to the Chrome Web Store. So you would actually have to go to the Google Play Store and download the new Screencast-O-Matic app. And I would advise this only because I think right now through the Chrome Web Store, uh, the functionality is not as advanced. Um, and I will tell you this, though. Um, th so Google came to every single one of the people, who, every, everybody who makes these apps through the um, Chrome Web Store and said that they needed to um, get rid of it by June of, I think, 2021. And so when we heard this last year, we started designing uh, with, through the Google Play Store, through the Android format. And so that's why you will see a new Chromebook app. Now, this Chromebook app, I will say I'm very excited about it. I haven't been excited <laughs> for a long time, but I'm excited about this one because you can actually, uh, ha it has the same functionality as your desktop, which is your PC or your Mac, uh, where you can go ahead and adjust the recording screen. And right now with the regular Chromebook app, you can't do that. It, it can only do the full screen uh, for the Chromebook app currently, but through the new one, you can adjust the screen, you can do the recording, you can do drawing tools. Uh, right now, the editing for that is actually free. Um, you can, I believe, trim and, trim and cut sections of your video. Uh, you can blur, which I know a lot, a lot of teachers are into the, the blurring of the student names and things. Um, there are uh, text, um, music, you can add music. Um, so there's a, there's a lot more functionality within the Chromebook video editor app than you will probably find in a regular desktop. Um, the only thing that is paid is the overlay tools. So we've added emoticons, frames, you know, fun stuff. Um, you know, to make it more engaging. Uh, so that's the only thing that's paid. And, and if you paid through, let's say you are, like Keely was saying that she she um, she has a, a deluxe uh, membership, you just have to um, type it in into the Chromebook video editor app and that one subscription gets you access through all your devices, including your Android, your iPhone, your Mac, as well as your uh, Windows. Any questions about that? No? Good. Hopefully you guys get to go and download it. <laughs> so I know earlier they were, um, one of the things was,
and maybe you can just share some some examples and stuff. And they were working through the videos prior to this and, and exploring those resources. But you know, as as you're working with lots of schools and educators and things like that, you know, what are some out of the box or, or creative ways in which you've seen people use video? I, I mean, I think the the basics these educators have, but you know, they're trying to figure out, you know, the the big issues. And you know, and I know you hear this all the time is like, how do we get you know the engagement how do we get kids to actually tune into the stuff and, and and use the material and so what are some things that you've seen or that maybe you could share i know we've got some resources on, on the pd that you shared like the the different the out of the box things there's the remote learning stuff so i know there's some great examples in there but um, maybe for some of those maybe you didn't get a chance to explore those links yet um is there any other things for them just to kind of spur some some new thought for for video creation yeah. Yeah, I think that if you wa started watching the batch videos, the, a good example is what um, Teacher Andrew did in the, uh, I think it was the second video on editing, and he showed a couple of examples of what he did. He's really creative, actually, um, and and used, you know, puppets and things. It, it, it was, a, he's really fun, um, but it, you get the chance to go ahead and show your personality a little bit more. Um, I have seen a lot of teachers uh, use the green screen function a lot more as well, just so that not only could you, you hide your background, but you could also engage with your background. Um, I mean, I usually invite teaching it around to the students and have students actually create the videos. I mean, they can launch it without a without a without um, uh, an account. Uh, right on the website so they could start creating their own videos or their own projects like explaining things to you um, that's been a really good teaching tool um, that I've heard uh, the other things is um, like uh, if you use let's say a tablet or Android um, you can start doing whiteboard type of stuff uh, Jamboard is one of the things that they that people have been screen recording um, and so that's a really good good whiteboard type of thing um, gosh, there's, there's a lot of videos that you guys can create. Um, I did publish something with 25 creative ways of using, um, using video. So, uh, it's jam packed full. <laughs> is, is there any other specific questions to that? There's a lot of examples online too. I was just going to add, and it's not necessarily a question, but when you were talking about the green screen and the backgrounds and so forth, that is uh, one of the things we've been trying to figure out as a way to celebrate our students online. And one suggestion that I had read about was that kids can pick your background. You know, that could be a reward for some kids. Obviously, our eighth graders probably are not going to care about that, but some of them might. But it could be just a fun way to make it a little bit more interactive for them, give them the opportunity um, that they can pick what what your um, background is or, or what their background is or something, you know, we're all about let it, celebrating our students in the building, um, but we're in a whole new world online trying to figure that out as well. Yeah. Uh, another, another good idea actually uh, that someone uh, gave me was, you know, t uh, breaking down the topics of your class and actually assigning them to each of the students and they make a tutorial video for each of that so that you guys can reuse those videos um, to teach you know your next set of students so you're not having to uh, regurgitate the same type of information or actually create the own, their own vid your own videos you can actually just get the students to do it too so that's uh, that's another good way to do it um gosh there's a I don't know if you've taken advantage of the, if you have your own free account, you have also the hosting account. If you get onto the website um, and you hit my videos, you should be able to have channels and folders that you can go ahead and organize a lot of your content. Um, a lot of teachers are using the channels to organize per class topic, and then you can actually share the link, a channel link to your um, students. And then they can get the whole list. So if you have class topics, it all comes up as one. So you you don't have to keep sending them links too. Just a few tips. <laughs> I saw a few head nods there. I think they like that idea. <laughs> I'm here for the shortcuts, guys. <laughs> 
So this is a general question, and Erin, maybe you, I know I've had experience with a lot of other districts also. Um, students that are hesitant to do videos, um, how much do you recommend or what are other districts doing? Because we're in a world now that, I mean, they chose online, um, which is great, but how much do you push them to do those videos? And how are other districts, are they encouraging kids or if they don't wanna do like screencasts, are they letting them just exempt themselves or how is that working? Yeah, and uh, that's a, a great question. I think it's uh, the conundrum that a lot are facing because how much do we force and not force? I mean, obviously we know we can't always force their face, but to do screencasts to explain their learning, there really is, in my opinion, no reason for them not to be able to do that um, because you're not asking them to showcase their homes and their and their face. Uh, so it's just a matter of if they don't want to go that route, which video narration and screencasting their work is the easiest route to explain their learning, then they have to come up with, with another means. And so what does that look like? You know, it's going to sound like a cheesy cop-out answer, so I, I apologize. But then it's it really depends on the task of what that could look like, so we could provide alternatives. You know, it might be as simple as I don't, you know, using a, a like like Vocaroo and a Google slide, where they can just add voice and not video, and just talk about the information, which is basically a screencast. But in their brain, they may not think it is because uh, mm -hmm. it's not video. It's you know, um, and so it, it could be some other tools. You know, I've seen not locally in this area yet. I've got a district that, that might, because they, they are a Microsoft school. They already got stuff set up, but like using Minecraft as an option to demo learning, that's not always ideal to every task. Um, and not everybody wants to go down that rabbit hole, uh, but it's just trying to figure out what some of those options could be. And then I think in the long run, most students will come to the realization that just doing a screencast is the easiest bang for your buck. And it's also quite helpful for the teacher and too. But I think as it's is because it is new territory, you know, it's it's like the the student defiance in the classroom that doesn't want to you know, put their name on their paper or you know the little things that we used to do face to face. This is the the new little defiance of, you know, lacking of learning, not being willing to ask for help, whatever the reasons might be that every kid has. Um, so not a perfect answer, but as you're working through assignments, that's something that we could continue to work on. Like what could be some options, you know, and start start to explore what else could we do besides that? Jill, to piggyback off of that, I think, um, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong and I can double check with administrators by, you know, they can always turn their video off. I know well, in March when I first started making screencasts, I didn't realize you could, you know, have your video on. I couldn't figure out how everybody's getting their video on the little corner, the side corner, you know, there is that option, um, you know, where they could just have their voice like Aaron said. And I feel like that would be like with any assignment that give them voice and choice. And there's their, there's their choice right there. Either it's just your, it's literally just your voice or it's your image. Um, but I can double, definitely double check with administrators on where they stand with that one as well. Is everyone familiar with Screencast-O-Matic or are we all just beginners? I can kind of just go through a little bit about it. And I think then the majority of us are beginners, but we've done it for a few weeks. <laughs> good, 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 good. Okay. Awesome. So that you guys know uh, about captions and about music, because those are a few options that we have available for for the screencast or for the free screen recorder. Does everybody? I do know? not know about the music and the captions. <laughs> We've oh. just been videotaping ourselves. <laughs> okay. So. I've been, okay. I've been doing it, but I don't think I've been doing it very efficiently. So okay. I'm always up for seeing what I'm could do better. Yeah, sure. So when you record, okay, so there's a couple of tips that I'll, I'll tell you uh, with the free screen recorder. When you record, you know where you, uh, you see the recorder box and it says record and you have your screen, webcam, and both? Um, when you hit record, next to the record button is a little timeline. It's really small um, where you can go ahead. You could actually, um, I don't know if anybody if anybody's done this, but you can actually record your screen, pause it, situate the recorder again, and then 
record again so that you're actually semi editing along the way. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen that. Some people don't know anything about it. Um, but right, so you could actually do that and you can um, go back on that small little timeline. If you've made a small little mistake, you can go back in that timeline and hit record again and it'll record over that mistake. So that's so sort of like editing. Um, next to the record button and the timeline are is the pen icon. Um, that is uh, access to the drawing tools. Um, I will say that the drawing tools give you um, the functionality to go ahead and it basically takes a screen grab of what you have uh, displayed on your screen and you can draw draw or you could add text or shapes. Um, but I will say that um, it's not doing, it, it's, it's basically the screen grab of your screen so that when you do stop the drawing tool, it'll go back to recording any movement um, if you wanted to go to another page or something like that. Um, so that's available and that's on the small, that small pen icon. Um, so when you uh, finish recording, you'll have, I believe, uh, several options. And it'll come up with a screen um, where your video will be. Uh, you can trim, for the free screen recorder people, you can trim the beginning and the end. That's one of the options. Next to that, you have the option to add music. And we've provided, I believe it was 30 music tracks. We've got a bunch of different categories that you could add background music to. Uh, that's a good way to keep the kids engaged, <laughs> just, just as a tip for you. Um, so if you can, add some music. Um, right next to that is the captions. So for anyone who's using the free screen recorder, you can upload a captions file. So that's a, I think it's a .srt and a .svt file. Um, so you could just go ahead and click on that and it'll hit upload. Um, and then you also have the option to uh, upload it to your Screencast-O-Matic hosting account where I was telling you before, it shows channels and it shows folders and you can go ahead and kind of just add videos to those channels or, or folders that you're gonna be sharing. Um, it also gives you the option to save as a video file. So an MP4 video file um, that you can, in, you know, you can use uh, either uploading to YouTube or to any embed, you know, if you're embedding it on a site or something like that. Um, I will say that with the paid version, you get a bunch more stuff. Um, you, you, first of all, the captions, which is extremely important for a lot of uh, teachers, and this is one of the reasons why they end up actually upgrading, uh, is due to the captions. Uh, we've got speech to text technology. So essentially, if you're, you know, if you're talking for 15 minutes and you don't want to do captions or type it out, you can use speech to text, which identifies your your uh, your speech and and basically puts it on there. Now, it's I can't say it's a hundred percent accurate, but you you actually have the captions editor to go ahead and fix those uh, mistakes um, that are made. But most of the time, I I just use that um, and then just fix a couple of misspellings or what have you. The other also op option is to uh, use the interactive interactive. Uh, captions editor, so you could just type it all in um, if you wanted to. Um, so that's one of the reasons why uh, educators love it. Um, they also have the chance to go ahead and record uh, more than 15 minutes and as long as they want. The only limitation to that is if you have a, a video that's, I don't know, over 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes or so, and that you're trying to upload it to Screencast-O-Matic, there is a bandwidth limitation of 15 minutes to upload to Screencast-O-Matic. Um, but I will say you have access to saving it as a, as a file, YouTube, direct, uh, direct YouTube uh, sharing links um, directly to Google Drive, um, as well as sharing to Google Classroom, Facebook, Twitter, the whole, the whole bit, even Dropbox and all of that. Um, 
let's see uh, see what else you also get the uh, video editing suite so you could do all the cuts uh, the overlays, the uh, blurs, um, a bunch of stuff. You can um, actually do, what's really good is you could, um, let's say you did a video several months ago and you just wanted to get it updated. You can actually take one video and then insert a recording that you've done three months ago and add that into your video. So you could do like an introduction and then your your past video, so you don't have to do it again. And then maybe uh, you know an outro or something at the end. Um, so there's a lot of tools in there. Um, you know, narrate for instance. Let, let's say that you did a screencast and you forgot to say something. You can actually hit narrate, and it'll 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 add narration to sections of your video. So you could do that as well. I know that's a lot. <laughs> Is there any other questions? So I have a student who's hearing impaired, mm -hmm. um, but from what you said, I can put captions on the whole entire video. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So yeah. that's good to know because then that will help her um, as we go. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I don't, I don't know if they've been implementing it because I, I, it, accessibility is it's actually the law to have captions on all videos and to have accessible videos available for everybody. Um, so I don't know if that's being implemented right now because due to remote learning being such a huge thing, um, but it's really good to add captions um, to all of your videos. It's also the law, so. <laughs> so we've probably got time for about one more question if you guys have it. Um, I know. She's got a crazy schedule and needs to run, so we were slotted for 30 minutes, but uh, appreciate her joining and helping and sharing some of those things that hopefully have given you some food for thought. But if there's something else that you guys have, um, speak now and forever hold your peace here before we, 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 we let her move on with the 20,000 other things on her schedule, just like you guys have with your schedule. So any final questions? Um, uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, just really quick. Um, I don't have a Chromebook. I just have a desktop. So I've actually just been using my iPad um, to record things, um, trying to, but so is there a difference as far as recording goes for a desktop versus a Chromebook? Because um, the, the way the webcam, um, like I feel like unless I'm pretty close to like my speaker, or my um, microphone is attached to my webcam. Mm -hmm. And so it seems like unless I'm fairly close to it, um, it's not going to pick up well enough. Mm -hmm. So then I'm just trying to figure out, depending on what I need to record or how I need to do it, are there any tips as far as recording with a desktop versus a Chromebook? Uh, well, we're trying to make it make it so that at least you have the same functionality for for both but i think you know the, the biggest tip that i would i would say for you throughout all of our uh devices is each device due to the the way that you know let's say you know apple wants their apps to look like or whatever each each of them all have their different types of apps now we're trying to make it so that it all kind of combines um, so our new, we're going to be launching a new, um, or upgrading our new Android and iOS app. So those are going to have the same functionality as the Chromebook app. Um, so those will have the same functionality. Now our desktop, which is our Mac and our PC have, um, have basically our original <laughs> technology in there. And there's a lot more that you can do. I will say that if you were a premier user, anything that you record on, let's say your iPad or your iPhone or Android, you can sync up all of your videos into your account. Um, so we have that cloud functionality. So anytime that I'm on my desktop and I record it on my iPhone, I see it. Um, I see my iPhone video on here. Um, but just remember that, that you can't just go on let's say your iPhone and go to the website screencastomatic.com and try to launch the, the recorder. It won't work. You have to have the app. Um, in terms of tips for, for, look, for your using your webcam, um, 
the biggest tip that I have, usually it's, it's just getting a basic light to make sure that you shine. Um, uh, I usually have a ring light today. I saw that I was a little dark, so I just turned on my lamp. Um, so just small little things like that to kind of improve you know, how you look or how you sound. Like I have a small microphone at times. Typically, if you are working out of your desktop, it usually has the, the functionality that you already need. The, the camera is, should be really good. I just add the light. No, oh, yeah, no, this, is, this has been great. I appreciate you uh, taking some time to just connect with us. Um, I know there's a lot on your plate and, and a lot of you guys are working through the updates and supporting all the educators. So, so we thank you for that. And I know this is a, a new tool for a lot of them in terms of they got the basics down, but a lot of your tips and ideas, I think will help them. Like, you know, I saw some head nods along the way that can just, you know, every second we can save, you know, is uh, just oh, makes yeah. life a little bit better. So we, we really appreciate you uh, joining us earlier this morning to, to share some of that. Yeah. And I, I reach out to me. I mean, give me, send me an email and if you have any questions or concerns or things are not working, right or need ideas just let me know perfect so we've got all that stuff Thank linked up very much. yeah on the learning pathway so you guys have access to her and all those resources and definitely with the the blog and stuff she's posting all the time that's where a lot of those resources are and so now you've got a name to the face and and all that good stuff and um you know again just one more way to strengthen your network so you guys realize you don't have to do all this alone so yeah. thank you so much for your time we appreciate it we'll definitely let let you run off and, and get going with the rest of your day and um, this has been been really helpful and it'll be helpful for those that are also teaching they didn't get a chance to uh, join in live so thank you thank for you it very much have a great yep. day thank you